Welcome back to Upfront with Tom Becker. You know, an election's coming up. Uh, the uh, uh, May primary is right around the corner. And my first guess is not, uh, you're not in, being in the primary, but uh, you are up for a re-election. The Congressman Don Bacon joins me. Congressman, welcome to the program. Thanks for being here. Tom, thank you. Congratulations having the show. I'm, I'm just honored to be on it. Well, let's see how it goes first, and then we'll take it from there. <laughs> I'm trying to butter you up a little bit. <laughs> okay, let me butter you up then, with a, starting off with an easy question. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Why should voters give you a second term? Well, first of all, there's no one better positioned with my experience on national security. I'm the only 30-year, roughly 30-year active duty retired general. I brought a lot to the table uh, this year. We got the best defense bill in over a decade passed, and I think I, we have our, our national security pointed the right direction. I'm now on homeland security, or I'm doing cyber security, trying to defend our, our energy grid. I think I bring some expertise to Congress that was sorely lacking, and I look forward to continue on with that. Also, I fulfill my promises. I promised uh, that I would work hard for tax reform. We got that done. We're seeing the effects uh, in our in our economy. So I'm committed to uh, keeping our keeping our spending controlled, which is going to be tough right now with trying to balance the defense and everything else. But also trying to get our tax reform done and keeping our and keeping our country strong na with national security. But didn't you also promise to repeal and replace Obamacare? It, that failed miserably. Didn't you also promise to mm -hmm. keep the uh, budget in check? And this tax plan that you're, yeah. you're, you're touting is adding another trillion dollars in our debt. The government borrowed another 300 and some odd billion dollars this last week alone. So mm -hmm. tell me again, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, well, let's talk about you're, the you're keeping your promises. The health care, and I voted to uh, reform our health care, and we still need to do something because we didn't, we didn't get that done out of the Senate. But when I talk to folks who are on the individual market today, they are gravely suffering. I talked to a person at a fish fry that's paying 44000 a year with a deductible, but many are paying over 30000 We have to reform uh, the individual market. And that's about 7% of our folks are on that. And so I'm still committed to doing it. But I voted to reform it, which I did fulfill my promise for that. And, uh, and the Senate needed to, should have acted on it. Okay, but the Republicans didn't really have a real solid plan to replace it with. I mean, you have to admit I that, think right? We, I think we went to... We tried to do too much. We should have had more to far tar targeted uh, focus on reforming the individual market. We also tried to do Medicaid, and I think that's where we, we messed up. We should have focused on the individual market where it is the most broke. Okay. Um, what about the, uh, you talked about the military. What about uh, the spending for the military? We, we spend more than any other nation. I mean, like, mm -hmm. by, you know, like four or five, six times than our closest uh, adversary. Uh, at least you got that right, because a lot of people say ten times. Yeah, okay. you're, you're, you're right. You're, okay, you're well, right good. Idea. Okay, so still four, five, six <laughs> times. And, and, and many of the people that are on the same list of how much they yeah. spend are well, our allies, or at least <laughs> who well, knows who our allies are now. Russia, this administration. And China. Russia and China are in that top, you know, two and three. Yeah, okay, yeah. But, okay but, but then you got a president that wants to spend military money to build a wall. Yeah. Okay, and, and you talk about the cyber, and that's really where the attack is, and yet the Republicans in Congress shut down the investigation about Russia's interference with our, uh, with our elections. Well, I think we uh, have a pretty good idea what they were doing on that with the investigation. Well, let's back up. You know, we cut the military 18% since 2010, and we did 37 continuing resolutions, which means you can't adjust for any new aircraft or training or whatever. You have to go with last year's budget. And the, the consequence of that, while you're fighting two wars, and you have a global mission with North Korea, Russia and the Baltics, nuclear space, uh, today only half the Navy aircraft can fly. We have 58 combat brigades in the Army, only five can fight tonight. That's bad for deterrence when you're talking about North Korea. Uh, we have the oldest, the smallest Air Force ever, the smallest Army since World War II, the smallest Navy since World War I. We lost 80 people in routine operations last year because of poor training and bad maintenance. So we had to fix this. Okay. Well, let me let me talk to you about the the concerns that I have about you being such a pro spending money on the military. If you were a farmer and then feeling this way, I wouldn't have quite the same. Mm -hmm. It's like saying, let's cut all these government programs. Let's cut the spending on everything except what is of my interest. Well, Tom, we already cut military 18 percent. We cut eight military 18 percent since 2010 while fighting two wars. So what we've done is we've we've replaced. We put back in 10 percent increase. So we're basically looking at us. Uh, putting back in 60% of what we cut while we're fighting wars, while we have this going on with North Korea. Uh, so I think when we make the case right, people understand it. Uh, we, when you lose 80 people uh, in the course of routine operations because they don't understand their equipment on the ship, so you get a ship collision or you have bad maintenance on aircraft, there's something wrong. We lost almost four times the number in routine operations we did in combat operations last year. And I think no one comes to the table with my background 
to, to voice for this. And, I, and I'm going to be a voice for our servicemen and women. You know, they haven't had a pay raise that matched inflation in over a decade. Mm -hmm. So at least we give them a pay raise that matches inflation. So I think we have a bill that will get the military healthy again. It doesn't replace, does take us back to where we're at in 2010. You know, we're, we're going up 10%, but it was cut 18%. And I think we're, we found the right spot now. But we are still substantially more than, uh, than Canada. And, you know, in Canada, you know, they're, they're doing okay, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they can focus within their borders. Uh, that's, the U.S. has a global, uh, you know, mission out there. We, we, we're worried about what goes on in the Korean Peninsula. We worry about the Baltics and Poland with Russia. You know, Russia not long ago went into Estonia, kidnapped one of their intelligence officers, brought him back to Russia. Estonia's a NATO ally. We're a country that has global concerns, and we think that the world's more peaceful if we have that connectivity with NATO, South Korea and Japan, Australia. Uh, but that means we have a global requirement. And so no other country in the world uh, is worrying about Afghanistan like we are right now in Iraq, the Baltics, deterring in the Korean Peninsula. And I think we should be uh, those concerns. But I mean, we can talk about the strategy, but if you're gonna have that strategy, you gotta fund to it. If not, then you need to pu pull the strategy back. But no other country in the world has the debt that we have in doing all of this. And no other country in the world has had everybody mm -hmm. targeting them the way that these other countries are targeting us. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, yeah, we are, I guess, the, mm -hmm. the, you know, the world's police keeper, right? right, policeman. right. But is that necessarily a good thing? Well, I think it is for peace. I think it would be a more dangerous world if we withdraw within our borders become more isolationists again. Uh, I think the world needs our voice uh, for freedom, individual rights, and we're the only country in the world that has the ability to project power like we do for good. And I think people want us to counterbalance what Russia's doing right now. Russia is acting aggressively with its neighbors. China scares Vietnam, the Philippines, uh, Japan, uh, because they're getting more and more aggressive. And we are what provides some stability there. So I think we're, we're better off being out there, working with our allies, and it creates a more stable environment. If we pull back in, become more isolationist, I think the world will be more dangerous. Okay, you mentioned Russia, and when mm -hmm. we return, take a quick break here, when we return, a lot going on with Russia, and I'm gonna ask the congressman, uh, will you uh, welcome Donald Trump coming to campaign for you this November? All that and more coming up on this edition of Upfront with Tom Becker. Welcome back. My guest is Congressman uh, Don Bacon, 2nd uh, uh, Congressional District. And right before the break, Congressman, I asked Donald Trump, if he comes to town to campaign for you, would you welcome him? I mean, he's been sort of a lightning rod for a lot of mm -hmm. these campaigns. He'll come into the neighborhood. He went to Pennsylvania, didn't do much good there. If he came to the 2nd District, which will be, a, a, you know, a, a district in contention, will you welcome Donald Trump to the market? He's our president of the United States. I think we should welcome him anywhere. So yes, I'll welcome him here to Omaha in the 2nd District. Is Donald Trump a help or a hindrance to your campaign? You know, I guess I don't think of it that way. He's our president. I would uh, welcome him here to the campaign. And I think, I, I, I think it would be a, a help, uh, but I'm not a, I'm a one-time candidate, so I'm still learning. Okay, so you say he's our president. He's a president that's put tariffs, which is, mm -hmm. uh, could very well hurt uh, the Nebraska farmers. Right. So, you know, so what, some of his policies are hurting your constituents, aren't they? Well, I think when those tariffs, when he announced them early on, they were broad, and I wanted and encouraged a more targeted tariff. But in the end, that's what he's done. And uh, so we have to look at the Korea tr uh, agreement they just did. That's going to be good for us. So he's actually moving the ball down the field with trade. NAFTA is starting to look very positive right now, uh, where, where, where we're going, and he's actually speaking and very positive about it. So I think he comes in with a hard bargain up front, but then he refines his negotiating position. And I think when it comes to tariffs, those tariffs were very, very targeted on the steel. It was mainly focused on China. And by the way, China is just robbing us blind right now. They're, they're on cyber. They're going and getting all our secrets and many of our companies, and there needs to be some kind of retribution to that. Then, okay, then you're on, you're on these committees. Mm -hmm. You tell me, what are we doing to fight the cyber war? Because mm -hmm. uh, we had, uh, I forget the admiral's name, head of the uh, NSA, who, was, who said that the president mm -hmm. is not giving him any direction to fight Russia on yeah. their, their involvement in our, uh, in our election. And so you talk about China mm -hmm. and cyber and Russia and cyber, and I think most Americans realize yeah. that's an important threat. But it doesn't seem, at least on the surface, that the government's doing anything to stop that? Well, we, we are, but I think it does deserve more clarity from the president and from Congress. We should give a clear mission to Cyber Command that you're not only there to defend the military and our national security networks, but there's a partnership with our 
you know, private sector, whether it's the energy grid or financial sector, working with businesses that uh, well, if we detect China going in, we should be able to notify them. We have, we have that in place, but we need to let those roots grow deeper. Uh, so right now we do have, a, I would say, a, a cell that detects what's going on with Russia and China, and they will work with the private industry, warning them, hey, this is what we're seeing, this is what's going on. I think we have to further develop that and mature that. And I think I'm very nervous about what our energy grid because it was just recently announced, but I've known this for about a year now, but we've, we finally announced it in an unclassified way, that Russia is mobilizing to take down our energy grid in a time of crisis. And the time to worry about this is now, not when you know, the, the, the crisis situations get worse. And we can make our system more resilient. So we need to invest more there. And I agree with you, but mm -hmm. at the same time, as I take a look at this mm -hmm. as an outsider, I see an administration that is losing, you know, whether it be Rex Tillerson, whether mm -hmm. it be the head of the VA, whether it be going down the yeah. line, Hope Hicks, all these people that he's losing, and now reports are coming out that says the president's even saying that, you know, he may not need a chief of staff. Right. You know, I mean, so A, that sounds more like a dictatorship to me, and B, how do you get all of these things accomplished when you've got so much turmoil, at, yeah. you know, I mean. I, I think the turnover does work against us. Now, I think it's important that he has people that, are compatible or cohesive with where he wants to go if you can't agree on stuff and I think maybe in some cases there, there was that and I think in the VA's case there was a, a, an unfortunately a scandal there that couldn't be, be ignored however I would agree with you that the turmoil uh, undermines where we're going and people need more than a year in a job to really get their feet on the ground and make an impact. General Bacon was very generous with his time and his uh, interview went on much longer than we have time for here on the air. So you can find the entire interview where we talk about DACA, we talk about the Russia investigation and a whole lot more. It's available right now online at fox42kptm.com. Go and uh, check out the entire interview at fox42kptm.com. You can share it with your friends. Back in a moment here on Upfront with Tom Beckham.